want to talk about prosperity. So this this is the muse and the message with Burnett. And I am Burnett Sherman, the messenger. And as I said, this talk is about um, it's a discussion, intuitive guidance, and um, practical advice. If you've got a question and you know who I am, I, I'm an intuitive, strongly connected, and you can go to drop it in the comments and I will I'll reply to it. So I actually want to talk about prosperity. My, my own personal theme for 2021 is purpose and prosperity and making sure that they align and aligning them in my own life and helping others align it in theirs. And I thought about prosperity and first of all, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For some, it's money, it's wealth, it's the physical, material things. And for others, it's beyond that. So prosperity can definitely include the physical, material blessings and gifts. But it's not just that. It's your health. It's your mental health, spiritual health, your emotional health, and your physical health, in addition to your financial health and all of the other wellnesses that you can have as we live on this planet. How, how well are we? Are we prospering in our lives? And so why do so many people struggle with prosperity? Why do so many people struggle with the idea that, um, that they can have prosperity, that they can have abundance, that they can have good health and wellness across the board. And I got to thinking about that. And you know, even in my own life, my own struggles with prosperity and abundance and, and thinking about what held me back, but also what helps me move forward in it. So you can't have one without the other, right? So what, what was holding me back and what helps me move forward? Things that can hold you back from prosperity is honestly fear. Fear of success is, is real. Fear of happiness, fear of, of having to get out of your current situation, your, your level of comfort, fear of abundance, and, and even fear of, and this is gonna sound crazy, but this comes to me, fear of security. If you've not had it before, or you've had it and, you're, and you've lost any of those things, there's a fear of getting your hopes all up, getting, you know, getting your hopes up and then it not coming to fruition and not bearing fruit or having it and then losing it. That's why some people don't prosper in love and relationships because they have a fear that they're going to get into something and then they're going to lose it. It's going to hurt when you have something and then you lose it. And, and some people believe it's better to not have so that you don't lose it than to have something and then lose it. Either way, experience, we came here to this earth, to this life, to experience it, right? And part of that experiencing is sometimes having things and then losing things. It's part of that experience. And I also thought about that it's um, it can be connected also to a lack of trust. And what, what do I mean by a lack of trust? Sometimes we don't trust ourselves to be able to maintain something. We don't trust those who are around us to support us as we try to move to another level, as we try to improve ourselves, as we try to get a goal and reach that goal. We don't trust that will be successful. And we don't, we don't trust it because maybe again, we've been hurt. Maybe we've seen someone else do it. And what happened when they were not as successful as we may have thought they were going to be or that they thought they were going to be. And it stops us in our tracks and it, and it keeps us from our blessings. It blocks us from our blessings when we say, mm, instead of going for a level 10 I'm just gonna I'm gonna go for level six you know I'm gonna go for level six 
and then we'll see. I'm only going to dream so big. I'm only going to hope so big because I won't have as far to fall. I'm going to put this limit on myself so that I don't hurt too much if I fall. I'll never reach that high. I'll never reach my full potential. I'll never get where I'm really supposed to go, but that's okay. You know, I, I won't hurt so much. And then, you know, God, spirit is saying, I had all this for you. I had all this for you. And you just want this. You just want this. And I had this. And we let all of that go. All of that joy and happiness, the security, the abundance, the ability to give and use our gifts fully, the ability to, to be a blessing and let that cycle of giving and receiving continuously grow and flow, we say, no, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. And then we lose all that was supposed to be for us, right? We lose all that was supposed to be for us unless we try again. And that's the thing. At the beginning of the year, I feel like it's a great chance to try again, to reboot, restart, look at, all of the things we say we love doing, all of the things that we say we're passionate about, that we're here to do, and try again to get into it. Try again to do those things. We're all here for a reason. And you know, I can speak for myself, you know, I have passions, but I also have a purpose. Now, my passion can be connected to my purpose, but my passions aren't necessarily always my purpose. Sometimes your passions are a hobby. They can be that. Your purpose goes deeper, it goes to a soul level. So for me, my purpose is to help others, inspire others to do what inspires them and to use their gifts out in the world. My passions include writing, being creative, communicating. Those are my passions. Now I use my passions to fulfill my purpose, but they, they are not my purpose. If I chose to use a different medium or a different method, I could still do that to get to my purpose. And fulfilling my purpose does not mean I need to leave behind my passions. I could still fulfill my purpose and not do it through the passions I have of being a writer and a communicator in that way of the written word, creative writing. So why do we get stuck? You know, we're into 2021 after a wild ride of 2020 that feels like it's continuing into 2021 and it is but all things will end. This, this is a season. This is a season in the life of our country. It will end. But the reason why so many of us back down from the opportunities we have to rise up to a higher level is because of, like I said, fear. But that fear comes from conditioning. Either our past experiences things we've seen. It also comes from external influences, family and friends, associates, acquaintances, neighbors, people you run into when you're out and about, who we feel are judging us, right? Who we feel like we have to be a certain kind of way. And all these expectations around how successful you are, what you're doing, is it worth it? Are you wasting your time? Are you ever going to get there? And while you do want to be practical and realistic, I mean, any goal needs to be realistic. And, you know, is it attainable? Yeah, you need to evaluate those goals for that. But don't evaluate your goals based on someone else's expectations or the influences of outside people. Be practical with yourself, but don't evaluate them based on other people. 
because they're not living your life. You came here with your purpose. They came here with theirs. They're not living your life. They're not living your purpose. And at the end of the day, they don't have to answer for what you did here. Only you do. Only you are accountable for your life. At the end of this all, and I believe, you know, we're going to be like, okay, what'd you do? What'd you do with your life? We gave you 80 years, 100 years, 50 years for some. What did you do? If you sit back and say, well, so-and-so said that maybe I should just do this instead of go all the way here. So, you know, instead of spreading my message and using my gifts like, you know, I was supposed to, I just decided to do this a little bit. It's like, we gave you this so that you could use this. So at the end of the, the day, they aren't accountable for the life that you are having. You are. You are. So don't don't let other people, external influences, people who want to tell you that what you're doing is stupid, it's not going to work, unless they have experience, <laughs> unless they have the kind of success that you're trying to get to. Let me tell you, don't listen to people about success who do not have success in the way they're talking, in, in the way you are seeking. I'm not going to define success for you, but if you are seeking to be successful in something and to prosper in something, are you going to ask the opinion of someone who is not prospering in that, who is not, and maybe not the exact same thing, but there's principles of prosperity and there's principles of success. If you're not asking people who have successfully lived, who are doing things successfully and prospering in them, why would you want their advice? Why do you want advice of someone who is not where you are trying to be? What are they going to tell you that will help you move from here to here? I want to leave you with this for, for this little talk on, on prosperity. The five people that you spend the most time around, and this, this is important. I want you to, to listen to this and then I'll give you one more thing. The five people you spend the most time with, just think about them right now. It could be family, it could be friends, the people in your house, the people that you work with, the most time with. You got those five people in mind? Those are the people you are most like. If someone from the outside were to describe you, it would be some kind of combination of those five people. Especially, especially if they haven't had a chance to really get to know you you're going to be judged by the company you keep and you're going to be influenced by the company you keep. It can be slow. It could be one minor decision at a time. And I was talking to, to my daughter who is, you know, she's a young adult now. And she was telling me how she had to stop being friends with a group of girls because she found herself, because she's, she's such a sweetheart but she found herself changing. And she said it was so, it was, it was so subtle that, you know, she was speaking to somebody and she said something that she said she wouldn't have normally said, but it was like what the girl she was hanging out with said. And afterwards she had to step back and, and she felt bad for saying, she said, I would never say that. Why, why would I say that? It's because you're like the people you hang around. You become like them. If you don't start out like them, hang around them long enough. You'll become like them. So this works for you in both ways. In a good way, hang around successful, prosperous, happy, joyful people who are living experiential lives. And you will become like them. Hang around people who are doing nothing, who are complaining, 
who are disgruntled, unhappy, never can haves, never can do, never will haves, guess what? You will be just like them too. So pick, pick your people, pick your people well. The last thing, a final, final thought. To create, to create anything of value. And this is, if you want to be prosperous, if you want to be successful and you want to be able to be prosperous in what you came here to be prosperous in and not just money wise, I mean, full, fully prosperous. You have to value these three things. You have to value your time. A lot of people don't really value their time. They think they do, but they let it just go anywhere. They let anybody take it up, anything. When you value your time, you know how to put limits on things. You know how to say no to things that aren't in alignment with what you're trying to do and what's not in alignment with your priorities and your values, your personal values. For me, family is very important. My home and my family are top priority for me. And if it comes between my family and something else, nine times out of 10, I'm going to choose my family. That's, that's me. Now, personal growth. Another thing. You have to value learning, growing. You have to be coachable. And that doesn't mean, co that doesn't mean that you're giving a coach. But everyone has to be teachable, coachable. Are you willing to learn and try new things? Develop new ways of being. I mean, I enjoy learning. I, I do. I love, I love to learn. And it's just one of those things that I realize you can learn from almost anybody. It doesn't have to be a guru. You can learn from, from the man on the street who's spinning a sign. I've seen some of those sign spinners and I think the energy with which they are doing that job, because we know it doesn't pay well. But the energy that they're doing it, so what if we all went about our work with that level of energy? Where would we be if we just went with that level of energy and commitment? You can learn from anybody. Learn from anybody. And finally, you have to value yourself. And that's, that's a big statement, but you have to know who you are. Know what your values are, know what your expectations are for yourself, and know when something is crossing your boundaries, crossing and, and, and rubbing against your personal values, or dishonoring you, and know when you need to back away, walk away, leave, or lean them forward because something is honoring you and it's, it's working well. When something is valuing who you are, then you know how to lean in more into that and, and be able to give more of yourself because you're getting what you need. So I just want to leave that with you, that you need to value your time, your personal growth, and yourself as well in order to create a prosperous life. Because if you don't value it, no one, trust me, no one else is going to value. No one is going to value you, the investment in you, or your time any more than you do. They will only do it up to the level that you do. All right, so.